Hello everyone, my name is Loco. I'm a Zerg player for Team Quantic Gaming, and today we're gonna take a look at a Zerg for the Zerg game. Now, first of all, foremost, you probably already noticed what the hell is up with this guy's voice. Well, you know, I'm, I'm obviously Dutch, right? So, so keep in mind the accent. But besides that, I actually have kind of a cold right now. Um, I've been having the flu and fever and all that kind of jazz for the last few days, and it isn't really that awesome. Um, however, I figured, you know, I can't leave you out with no videos at all, right? So, here we go, we are going to do a Zerk vs. Zerk um, analysis kind of video. I'm going to be doing this Zerk vs. Zerk that I played about two days ago on uh, Daybreak Ali vs. none other than Rat Nor, apparently, uh, who spawns as the Red Zerk in the bottom left corner of Daybreak Ali. Now, right now, Zerk vs. Zerk in Heart of the Swarm is pretty much completely 100%. 100% all about the Mutalisk. Like, Mutalisk, Mutalisk, Mutalisk is the only thing that's really happening right now in Zerg for Zerg. Reason being is because they got buffed an insane amount. And um, obviously, like, the Hydralisk got buffed as well, but still, Bailings deal with them just fine. So, really, the only viable option right now in Zerg for Zerg is to go for Mutalisk. Now, people have been trying to figure out different kind of ways. Um, to deal with this sort of a thing because obviously you know mutaling is all fine and dandy but uh we kind of don't want to be doing that for the next three years so people have been trying to figure out a few different things right now um in zerg for the zerg to um deal with this sort of thing and the build order that i'm about to be or <laughs> that i'm about to be doing is actually something that i've noticed a bunch of programmers try to do uh for example i saw stefano try to do it as well um, and it's actually a plus one plus one push in Zerg vs Zerg. Now, the reason why plus one plus one is so amazingly good, especially in Zerg vs Zerg, is because um, Bailings usually one shot Zerglings. But as soon as you have Zerglings with plus one armor, it actually takes two hits for a Zergling to kill, or for a Bailing to kill a Zergling. So basically, Zerglings become all of a sudden um, a lot stronger versus only just only Bailings, but also versus um, with like the plus one attack upgrade, they also just do a shit ton more damage and a lot of people don't really know how to deal with that sort of a thing now uh, the main importance with this kind of a build order and once again I'm not finalized on this build whatsoever and I'm not completely comfortable with it yet but I have noticed that as soon as you want to do this build order you kind of need to make 100% sure that your opponent is never ever ever allowed to get any kind of um, third base up like your third base you know he can start it he can maybe finish it up but you never want to allow him to start mining those gases because once again the opponent is most likely 100% of the time going for mutalisk and because of that you don't want him to get all the gas income to make like a billion mutalisk uh, which will obviously be the counter to your uh, mess zergly kind of strategy with plus one plus one now as you might have noticed i'm going to be opening this one up pretty standard i actually went for a hatch and a gas before the spawning pool uh, which is kind of standard right now it keeps you safe versus most all-ins as well obviously versus super early pools um it is going to be super risky but you know you don't really see those anymore i haven't faced any early pools uh, for the longest time so I'm, I'm not really too worried about that um and uh, yeah i'm just going to be opening up this uh, build pretty damn standard now like i mentioned i'm not completely standard or i'm not going to completely um comfortable with this build just yet so it is going to be a pretty interesting thing to see how this thing evolves but this build does show you that it actually or this game does show you that it actually is viable um, to go for such a build with the plus one plus one now the basic goal for this strategy is that you want to get some two base saturation going on and after that you only want to be making zirkling 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 uh, while waiting for your plus one plus one to finish now there are a few obvious moments that you will need to uh, play it super safe because in the early part of the game uh, you don't really have anything because I'm also skipping out the spine crawler uh, so what I'm actually having right now is having two oh shit zerglings on my ramp and let me actually take a look at those right here those zerglings that are on my ramp are only going to sit there and I'm potentially going to be morphing those into bailings if it turns out to be necessary but right now it looks like oh he's actually doing some standard scouting uh, for himself and meanwhile my zerkling speed right now finished up as well and I'm going to be taking a look inside of his main base so what I'm looking for right now is basically if there's something cheesy going on. Do I see a Roach War? Do I say a Spire? Do I see a Lair? Do I see anything? But so far it looks to be, you know, a pretty standard build order so far by my opponent. I'm a little bit early on the scouting part right now, so I'm not too worried that anything cheesy is going on. Um, he had a pretty decent saturation going. I have my plus uh, or my two evolution chambers up right now as well. And since I'm not going to need all the gas anymore, and I'm not going to be mining as much gas as my opponent, I can actually go for a much earlier third base. 
So here we go. I'm already taking down my third base. Going to start the plus one armor first. And I'm going to follow it up with the plus one attack. Now, one of the options that I could go for right now is actually uh, to simply... Um, like, take all my drones off gas, or I could take more gas and go for a quick lair. Uh, I'm not completely sure if it is going to be worth it to actually get the plus two, plus two going, or maybe go for some late Munalisk, um, or maybe go for some, um, you know, maybe maybe some Hydralisk, or maybe some Infestus. I'm not completely sure if you should go to the lair tech at all. Uh, what I've seen Stevano, for example, do is actually just stay on the spot or on the hatchery tech for the longest time. Pull drones off gas and go for mass queen with mass zerkling. And uh, once he hit about six or seven, um, six or seven. Um, oh, here we go. By the way, this is going to be a sweet. Oh no. Yep. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah. But I was. Oh, uh, what I was gonna say is that as soon as Stefano had like eight queens or so out, he actually figured that he could go for a push, and he simply walked those across the map, and they dealt just fine with the mutilist stuff as well. Uh, while the zerklings were doing a lot of damage, so that's one of the options that you can go for. Um, there are a lot of like undiscovered areas. I guess you could say um, about this strategy so there's a lot to be still focusing on but here we go he's just trying to get a deny on my third base I'm basically just trying to not uh, trade too many zerklings um, and here we go I'm actually uh, trading quite efficiently right now I know that my zerklings will soon have plus one plus one so I don't really want to be focusing on that once again a really sweet hit right there um, just some standard link bane link kind of micro now soon and soon, I mean, eh, let's see how many. In 30 seconds, we will actually see the strength of plus one, plus one Zerglings. And how much stronger they actually are compared to an unupgraded Zerglings. As you can see, he pretty much has the same amount of Zerglings as I do right now. My plus one attack and my plus one armor are about to be finished. And this just makes an incredible, like, it's, it's a huge difference um, as far as Zerglings goes. So first of all, there we go. As you can actually see. All these Zerglings got hit by the Bailing, but they actually did not die. This is the first little thing um, that you have to realize when going for this kind of a strategy. Now, as you can see, uh, we were at a pretty even Zergling count right there, but I just have so much more stuff incoming, and these Zerglings are just so fast when it comes down to taking buildings right now. It is pretty damn insane. So here we go. I actually have a macro hatch tree myself. I have um, a third base up and going right now, and I'm actually moving more and more Zerglings across the map right now. As you can see, 30 more Zerglings on the production tab. If I would have injected a little bit better in this game, I actually would have also been able to spend the lost gas and lost... Or the lost minerals, rather, and maybe even the gas um, that I have in this circumstance as well. Um, but basically, all I'm going to try and do right now is play it super safe and make more and more or more and more zerklings. Now, since I realize that he is going 100% of the time from Unilist, there's no, there's just no real other option. I can just keep running by and keep going inside of his main base, going to try and keep in his natural, uh, because. His Munalisk will simply not be enough to outnumber me at, at all. Like, I'm actually target firing down the Spire right now. That Or target firing down the Spire right now. I'm trying to take down drones as well. But as you can see, the Spire is going down right now. And there was absolutely no moment in this game where this guy could have done anything a little bit differently. This guy was going for a standard Munalisk kind of play. And it basically got completely crushed by the plus one, plus one Zergling kind of stuff. Which is kind of funny when you think about it. Because... You know, you wouldn't think that a counter to a Mulelist strategy is plus one, plus one Zerglings, right? But as long as you keep running by with Zerglings, and as long as you micro pretty well, it is actually a huge advantage that you get yourself into, as long as you do not allow your opponent to go for a really early third base, um, like I did not allow my opponent in this game. So right now, he is moving out with Mulelisk across the map. I saw them moving out on the minimap, so I know there will be barely any defense on his side of the map. So once again, I'm going to be running in with these Zerglings, going to keep going for all his main base and go for his natural at the same time and he gg's out of the game i want to thank you guys all for watching hopefully this gives you some time to think about a lot of different strategies uh, that might be viable in zerk versus zerk hopefully you have an amazing day today and uh, don't forget to smile and hopefully i will see you in the next video bye Hello everyone, my name is Loco, team of Qu- <laughs> What the hell was that? <laughs>